Uh, I'm Nate Trinrude, director of Pop Rocks, competing in the Generation 14 Plus short film category at the Berlinale. Going somewhere? Give me those. Why? So you can leave us in the dark again? Okay, what is wrong with you? Nothing. Give me the keys. Okay, I guess you're just a bitch for no reason then. Great to know. I'm a bitch for one night because I had a plan and I ended up chaperoning your date. Date? This wasn't a date. We're just hanging out. It's what we do. Oh, you're always just hanging out. And then I have to twist myself to do whatever you want. Like what? I drive you to school every day. I gave you all that candy and you basically own all of my sweatshirts now. You said they're too small for you. Still! Well, I didn't ask for any of that shit, Jesse. So what do you want from me? I'm in love with you, Rox! I just wanted to tell you that. But now I just want to go. Hi, welcome to the 32nd Teddy Award. I'm Jean Bordeaux-Bobek, and we're gonna discuss Pop Rocks with direc director Nate Trinrude. Hi, Nate. Hello. Welcome to the festival. Thank you. Um, how are you feeling so far? Good. It's been amazing. Um, I think we're, our team is, we have five people from our team here, and I think we're all a little shocked that we're even here. So okay. it's, been, um, it's been a really amazing experience so far. Yeah. Well, the movie is about teenagers, mm -hmm. teenage love, teenage desire, um, about the youth. It's, I think, something that everybody who already went through or who is right in the middle of that period in their life they can relate to it very well. Um, um, what draws you to, to this time? Because your previous yeah. movie also dealt with, with, with teenagers, young people. Young people. Yeah. yeah, well I think, I think one big thing is, especially in queer cinema, there's, there's not a ton of queer content for young people or about young people. Yeah. And so that's really exciting to me. Um, I also, you know, I grew up in a, in a very small town, which is a lovely place, but it was sort of separate from everything. And so, I didn't have a ton of queer representation in film or TV growing up uh, as a young person. Yeah. When I uh, sort of very much wanted to see that, and so it's exciting for me to get to provide that or, or to fill that void um, yeah. that existed for me for others. Yeah. So, so it's important for you to kind of give like some queer representation yeah. to the community, to queer youth. Well, and completely. They can it. I mean, I know growing up, I so much learned about yeah. social situations and things from television or from film about young people, and. There's no guidebook for being young and queer. No, <laughs> you yeah. have to kind of figure it out on your yeah. own. So any assistance through stories about that experience, I think, helps everyone. Yeah. Well, in the film, we can see all this emotional turmoil that, yeah. that <laughs> comes with, with all of this. And, and the center of the film is, is a, it's about a confession. Someone wants to make a confession, a love confession yeah. to, an, to another person. Was this something that, uh, that particularly interested you? Was this something that that, that came from maybe like a personal experience. Yeah. So, so our story actually um, originated from our writer, Alyssa Lerner, who's an amazing, amazing writer. And uh, this is loosely based on her relationship growing up queer with uh, two okay. of her best friends yeah. and sort of navigating what that means to have friendships and feelings. And I think she says it best when she talks about how we were constantly, she says that they were constantly um, falling in love and breaking each other's hearts all the time. Yeah. So, uh, but I think it's something we all connect to. I think we've all been Jesse in our lives, or, or the girl who um, doesn't have the feelings, or the girl who just doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. I also loved um, the whole Pop Rocks yeah. analog. I mean, it, it, it really reflects well what the film is about. Right. But why particularly the Pop Rocks? Well, I think one thing is that, that uh, it was a little bit of a throwback to, to our youth. I know that yeah. in America, pop rocks were a huge thing when I was growing yeah. up. They still are pretty big, but you, do you have them in Germany? Are they here? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. We, we the other day we asked, and some people were like, we yeah. don't know what those are. And I was like, uh-oh. Yeah. Um, but young love is temporary and fleeting and can hurt. And pop rocks are a candy that starts out sweet, but then sort of explodes in your mouth. And uh, there are times where it actually hurts to eat. Yeah. And so for us, it was a perfect metaphor for sort of her experience, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. But as you mentioned as well, that 
you kind of go back to your to your own youth. It really feels like in the movie as well that we are a bit like going back in time. Yeah. With, with all these methods that Jesse comes up with, how to right. confess that love. It, it was really interesting to see in a world where everybody is just like on their phones and like maybe they would just confess on social media or, 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 or whatever. Right. And for me, I mean, I, I love social media. I'm an addict like most of us. But for me, visually, it's so boring to see on screen. And so finding other creative ways, and, and I think it's indicative of the character too. Yeah. You know, she is creative and she, she wants to sort of express herself in a way she doesn't understand. Yeah. There was the, the finger puppet yeah. scene in, in the movie. Was that like animated or was that acted no, those out are real, real. Those are yeah. real finger puppets being used. Um, we had an amazing artist named Yuthana Yuos who drew those yeah. for us. Yeah. And um, we sort of fell in love with them and tried to get them in as much as we could. Yeah. So what do you think, what, what is really the message that especially a young queer audience should take away from this yeah. movie, what, what, what's well, underneath it? For me, I think that so often um, young queer stories focus on the tragedy of being queer, the difficulties, yeah, exactly. the pain. And those are important films and I'm really glad that they exist, but there should also be an alternative. So we wanted to make a film that focused on the emotions, that was about a queer character dealing with her feelings and not about a character with feelings dealing with being queer. Yeah. Um, and for us, it's a film about thinking you know what you want and then realizing you need something different. Yeah. For Jessie, it's, it's wanting to tell her best friend she loves her and realizing at the end that she, she kind of needs to love herself first. Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, that was very important and as you just pointed it out that it really shifts the focus from well, let's say traditional queer cinema or, or like the tropes of, of queer cinema, right. it really shifts to something that is, that is happy, celebratory or, or, or empowering in many ways, right. where, where you have to kind of come to terms with, with who you are and first take that and then you can step right. towards others from well, there. And it was important for us to not end the film in a way we felt was false. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we could have given it a happy ending and she could have gotten what she wanted. Yeah. But, but I, I, you know, I don't think youth is ever quite like that. And we learn the biggest lessons when we fail the most. Yeah. So. And it also felt a bit like that, that Jesse realized that maybe, maybe she has different feelings. It, it also felt yeah. like that, that it's a movie where, where queer teenagers have to understand nuances and like differences between different feelings and, and recognizing what do I actually fear towards? Completely. Towards and that's person. what that time is about, finding yourself. Yeah. And so the beauty of doing a coming of age film is that we get to, to explore that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the casting and, oh, and yeah. about the cast? Yes, because what do you want to know? We have an amazing cast, uh, very talented young actresses. Yes. Um, are they somehow related to the queer community? How did you find them? Yeah, yeah, How yeah. How was it working? They're, they're all very queer friendly, but we um, actually found, so our, our star, Kimia Bipornia, yeah. who is one of the most amazing actors I've had the chance to work with. Uh, we actually found her, she auditioned for the smallest part. Okay. And we were having a hard time finding our, our lead. Um, because it's, part, it's a difficult part. You have to be both funny and heartfelt. And that's a, you know, for young actors, that's a difficult line to, to tow. And um, she came in and was so hilarious as Evelyn, who has a few lines yeah. that we, we sort of instantly knew. And then we were lucky enough to find Samantha Dilde, who played our Evelyn, who is yeah. equally as funny. And Sarah uh, Young Chandler, who is our Roxanne, uh, had sort of workshopped the piece with us a uh, yeah. few months before, and we just kept her around because we loved her so much. Yeah. yeah. Um, and how was, was the production I'm just wondering if, if you had any support from the community or sure. you tried to like strengthen links yeah, with, of course. With, with the queer community. Well, one thing that we tried to, to be very um, sensitive with is, I, I am, in fact, if it's not clear, a, a white gay male. Yeah. And this is a story about um, two queer women of color, especially. Yeah. And our writer is a queer woman of color. And so she was involved with every step of the decision-making process. Because yeah. I think authenticity is really important, especially when you're yeah. dealing with representation. So Alyssa has been my counterpart the entire time and yeah. was on set every day and um, yeah. I couldn't have made it without her. Right. It's good that we point this out that, yeah, indeed, the main lead is a queer woman of color. And it's a very strong character with with a strong voice, yeah, obviously she's a teenager, she's a bit lost, Yeah. but she finds her path, and was this something 
important to you and for this project to really emphasize this and have such a strong female voice and such a strong queer woman of color in the film. Absolutely. Um, you know, I talked about how I, I grew up and didn't see myself yeah. much on screen. Yeah. And even now that queer cinema has moved a long way forward, queer women of color are still the least represented yeah. in the canon. And I think that any way that I can support that, I want to. Um, you know, and I think the more we show the diversity of the community, the stronger the community is. Yeah. So this is a film that will probably say a lot to the queer youth, and maybe they will recognize themselves in it, they will see themselves in it a bit, which will be probably a great revelation for them. Was there a movie when you were in your youth <laughs> that like really had an impact on you and you were Definitely. like, oh my God, this is me, this is about me. Do you know the film Stand By Me? Stand By, by Me, River who? Phoenix? Oh yeah. Do you remember yeah. that? It's like three yeah. boys who are yeah, friends yeah, yeah, yeah. who right. find a dead body. It's like yeah, based on a Stephen yeah. King short. For me, that was a film that really opened my eyes. And yeah. I think in a lot of ways informed what I was interested in. Okay. Um, Cause that film explores young masculinity and yeah. friendship and feelings in a way that I hadn't seen. Yeah. And even though it's not explicitly queer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it touched in me feelings that I, um, was experiencing for sure. Yeah. So that's a that's a big one that really yeah. affected me. I also I mean, watched a lot of Gregor Rocky growing up. I'd like sneak to my local blockbuster store yeah. in like the Midwest and find yeah. like discount movies that, that the art films that like people in my neighborhood didn't know what to do with. Yeah. And I would just watch them. Yeah. So queer cinema. Yeah. Like I mean you mentioned Greg Rocky. Yeah. Uh, it, did this have an influence on your filmmaking practice? It, it did, but it was hard to access. You know, right. I wasn't in an urban area, and so yeah. finding those things, especially when the internet was sort of just starting, was very difficult. I think what's so exciting now is, because of the internet, it is much easier to find these things and to access them, especially in short form. Yeah. So um, I'm really passionate about finding ways to get content that is queer to people in areas that maybe um, don't have access yeah. to the big cinemas or things. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's a. That yeah, you, me. you mentioned that, like, especially in the short. Form, yeah, and this is what you're working with mostly. Yeah, is this why, why short film? What, what is well, one, it's, the it's, excitement? It's about easier this? to produce, uh, it's scale okay. wise, yeah. and you can right. create more content more quickly. Yeah, um, but I also think that you know, Generation Z is sort of one of the queerest generations of kids that have come along. It is they're more open minded and they're more willing to sort of explore things, but they also, as I do, have a shorter attention span. And so getting story across as quickly as possible um, in, a, in a way that's consumable, uh, as long as it's keeping the impact, is really powerful. Yeah. Are you working on something? Ooh, now? I am. Let's look into the future. I am, yeah. The next short that I'm going to shoot, um, which a dear friend of mine wrote, um, sort of focuses on uh, platonic queer friendship. Okay. Which I think is another thing that we don't often explore, what it means yeah, to be definitely. two queer people who, who yeah. don't want to have a relationship, yeah. but yeah. are dependent on one another. Yeah. So is it also in the short yep. form? It is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Another yeah. short form. Well, hopefully we will get to see it very soon. I hope so. And I want to thank you for, thank for you. the interview. And congratulations on the movie. Thanks. Uh, it really was an amazing throwback to my teenage years. I really enjoyed it. Um, thank you again. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the Berlin Alley. And we are really happy to have you here at Tutati. Thank you so much. Thank you.